Hello folks and welcome to this new video, my name is Andrew and today we are going to see a new fast help about Godot. This is going to be more of an explanation because I heard you loud and cloud, loud and cloud, <laughs> because I heard you loud and clear, you don't like the intro jingle or the background jingle, so basically, so probably I'm not going to put them anymore on my videos. So what we're going to talk about today is about the process delta or the delta or the physics delta and why you should multiply per delta the moving things. Right now I'm going to print out the physics process and we're going to see what we're going to get. Like you can see we're going to get this number here even though I put a lot of objects this number is going to be kind of not moving, <laughs> constant. So the question basically is what is delta? Well delta is the number that we get if we divide one, one second by the number of frames per second that the software is running. Right now, this number is one divided by 16, and we're going to get this number here. And like you can see, it doesn't change even though our machine is pumping out a lot of objects on screen. Now, what happens if I change this to process delta? Like you can see, the number right now just changed. It is smaller than before. This is because right now, we're printing a different delta that is about the process delta and it's one second divided by 144 frames per second that my machine is capable of running right now. If I increase the number here, we're going to see that the process delta is going to print out a different delta. Like you can see here in the outputs, it's moving a little bit. Now what happens if we have two objects? One is on process delta and one is moving with the physics delta. I have this one that is process delta and I'm adding just three pixels to the X coordinate and I have this other one, the green one, that is physics delta and I'm adding three pixels in that one as well. Now if you watch what happens is that the process delta moves really fast and the physics delta moves slower. That's because they're running at different speeds. Proxys Delta runs at 144 frames per second, the Physics Delta runs at 60 frames per second. Right now my machine is a laptop and, and as long as it is on charge, so it's plugged in on charge, it just runs at full power. And if I had unplugged it, this happens. Let me unplug it. Now my machine is unplugged and it just slows down the performance because it needs to save battery. And what happens right now is this. Physics process is just running as before, while process delta is running very slow. And that's because the number of frames right now are just 60 or 30. I don't know, probably 30. Let me see here on the monitor. Frames per second, 30 while physics delta is running at 60 frames per second. So basically, even though I add a bunch of objects here, physics delta just don't care about that. It just runs at 60 frames per second. Now, what happens if I multiply this thing per delta or under the process delta? So if I run it right now, it's going to be very, very slow. That's because we're multiplying three for this number. It's 0.03. It's going to get something that 0 0.09, something like that. And 0 0.09, it's very small. We're going to multiply 300 per delta to get something decent. And we're going to get this speed here. Now, what happens if my machine runs again at full power by performance? I just plugged in my machine again on power and it's on charge and it's running at full performance again. Now, if I run this again, this is what happens. The speed basically didn't change, it remains the same speed, but it just moves a little bit smoother. We don't have strange glitches moving around, but it moves smoother and it just doesn't go slower on the movement. It moves at the same speed, even though it looks a little bit laggy. So why you should multiply per delta? You should multiply per delta to have a constant speed, even though your machine isn't that powerful, even though your machine is going to run at low performance. Because remember, there is a lot of people out there that doesn't have 
the performing machines that you might have while developing your game. So that's pretty important to have good movement to benefit about the 144 frames per second to benefit to the high performance machines as well. So basically that's going to give you a constant speed. Okay guys, this was all, hopefully this helped you. And since I don't have the scientific knowledge of what's happening uh, and what's the real difference between the two, I can't really explain in that kind of terms. I just made two examples to show you why you should multiply. And if you know anything more and you want to share your knowledge, please, Leave them in the comment down below. Maybe I can make a video in the future to update this thing. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you like this format, still this format. And see you next time. <laughs> Bye.